my show is to promote local small businesses and leaders who are making a remarkable difference during COVID-19. You can watch Lead the Way on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. All links are down below. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and lead the way. Let's get started. The goal of my show is to promote local leaders, small business owners, and frontline workers who are battling during COVID-19. Jeremy Rogers has 20 years of proven track record in information technology, defense, and government. Mr. Rogers serves as an active reserve officer in the US Navy, acting as a cyber intelligence team leader. And most importantly, Mr. Rogers serves as a deputy mayor in the best city in the world, Boca Raton. I'd agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogers, thank you for your time. It is an honor to meet someone in the U.S. Navy. Thank you for your service. Well, thank you. Can you share more about your role in the U.S. Navy? Are you like Jack Ryan from the Amazon series? <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't seen it, believe it or not. Um, I think he's a little more forward operating than I am. So uh, first, thanks for interviewing me today. And it's always great to see one of our local residents out here. And um, good on you to be out here early on a Saturday morning. Uh, so uh, thanks for getting together today. So in the Navy, I'm a, what's called a reservist. So on the military, you kind of have what's called active and reserves. Actives would be someone who, uh, it's their full-time job, you know, they're nine to five or often 24 hours a day. On um, the reserves, it's one weekend a month, two to three weeks over the summer usually. And then you could also um, take orders from time to time. So as a reservist, you could be called up uh, for six months, for nine months, for a year, every four to five years. But for the most part, it's a way for you to serve your country in a part-time capacity, still give back, and uh, be ready when the country needs you to fill in in a spot. Mr. Rogers, you were with IBM for nine years. My dad works for a tech company, and my mom is in IT. And I also love technology, especially for gaming like Fortnite. Oh, <laughs> I played some Fortnite this morning, actually. <laughs> My parents always worry about hackers. Mm -hmm. You're an expert in this area. Do you think that cyber crime and cyber terrorism will increase and how can we prevent this? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, I'm still with IBM actually. It's been uh, a while and I'm with IBM security. And the, it's, you know, there's a concept called defense in depth, which is really looking to be as secure as you can at every single level. So if you're talking about at home, you want to make sure like your router's locked down. Um, as a parent, you need to make sure, you know, what, or who your kids hang out with and what you're getting into involved with that as a corporation or a city. And that you've, we've actually seen a big uptake in uh, cyber attacks against municipalities, against cities, against states, against counties. And when you see like an emergency time, when we're talking about what's going on right now with the COVID-19 stuff, when people are distracted, you see more attacks go on. So I think um, practicing security protocols where, and it, doesn't, it's not just about folks like us, the IT professionals, and maybe the future IT professionals, but it's about teaching good security practices to everyone, whether it's the young folks, the older folks, the non-cyber folks, making sure they're not clicking on any executables or crazy emails that come in, uh, making sure they're not taking a thumb drive that you may find out on the street and plugging it in, and just really focusing on security from the ground up and making sure that kind of uh, practice is just prevalent across your whole, yeah. you know, your whole company. Being deputy mayor of Boca Raton is a big responsibility. Can you share us about your role and how this role has evolved due to COVID-19? Yeah, absolutely. So for the city of Boca Raton, there's five people on council. The mayor gets elected separately and then four council members are elected. And then every year from that five person council, they choose a deputy mayor. And this year it's been me and I had it last year. Um, all five of us, even though the mayor is the figurehead of our city, all five of us have the same vote. So for any policy decision, and that could be like uh, something as simple as a response to uh, what's been going on, or it could be negotiating our first responder contracts or negotiating economic development or setting any laws that we do, approving projects, approving parks, um, we all get the same vote. Uh, so it's, it's important to really take all aspects of the community take that input and do that. Now, uh, to your question with the COVID-19 response and that it's, you know, we've never seen anything like this at a city level, at a state level, at a county level, national level. Uh, 
personally, I think being data driven and your response to that has been usually important. You've really seen people go in all different directions on this. And even now, some people are still saying we shouldn't be open whatsoever. Other people are saying, you know, return to the rock concerts. I think there's probably a, a happy medium in there. I'm happy to see people returning to work. If you just look at how many people are at the tennis yeah. center right now, it's good to see people going back out. But I think focusing on the data, looking at the science, making decisions based on that instead of say maybe what might be in the media or the newspapers has been the best place to be and that hasn't been the case across the country in all areas yeah what is the mayor and local government doing to help small businesses and people who are losing their money and jobs due to COVID-19 that's a great question so I'll say first uh, we approved a small business assistance program in our meeting uh, just this last Tuesday and that opens up Monday at 8 a.m. So if you're watching this at home, be sure to log into the myboca.us. Um, the application period is going to open up Monday at 8 a.m. It's first come, first serve in this case. We wish we could help everyone uh, and we wish we could help them more than we are. But for this specific program, it opens up Monday at 8 a.m. Log in, get your paperwork ready now uh, because it, that money is going to go fast. And the county has federal money. The CARES Act money came through the county. They're working on a well, much bigger program. Our program's relatively small compared to what the national and county can do. But that's just a small piece of the pie. From the city's perspective, we've also worked with local businesses, restaurants, retailers to allow them to, uh, what we're calling, bump out. So if you go to Meisner Park right now or many other restaurants, they've put tables out in what would traditionally be even parking areas. So you can't drive in Meisner, the main roads right now. You could park in the garages, but what would normally be that circular kind of streetway in Meisner is now table seating. That's allowing people to continue to be more distant, eat outside. Some people aren't ready to eat inside even at 50% capacity. Uh, but I think just getting everyone back to work is really the biggest thing we could do. So letting people get back to their lives, protecting those who are still most vulnerable and need it, but allowing the people who are ready to go out and get back to work to allow and get their businesses back in, back in business. And some businesses still aren't at that point. We're still waiting for honestly the county and the governor to take some uh, restrictions off so we could get fully back to normal what are your plans for reopening and do you worry about reopening too soon so i think uh, if you look at the science and the data of it for the most part uh young folks people like uh i'm not quite as young as you but even people in both of our demographics have seen not a large effect of this so you got to take any uh, it kind of goes back to the data of it. If you take someone like my mom, who's about to turn 70, um, and people older than her, they've seen a lot higher prevalence of serious negative implications. And that's not to say that no one young has seen it, but we, you know, it's kind of morbid. You have to look at the data for everything and not have a response that's way out of proportion for something that's happening. So if you take like the average worker who might be 20, 30, 40, even 50, they're not seeing any worse of an outcome due to what's happened in something like this, then they might end a severe flu season. Now, if you're 70, 80, 90, absolutely. And we've seen our senior homes, um, our assisted living facilities, that's the place where if something like this disease gets a foothold and, and carries out, it's, it's really bad. So from an opening perspective, I think we're ready. I think the governor's plan to kind of go through a phase one, phase two, phase three is well thought out. Um, we're in a phase one right now here in Boca with 50% capacity. We still don't have some places that are open. I know like gyms just opened recently, barber shops uh, opened a little bit before that. Uh, we don't have uh, like tattoo places open yet. We don't have um, like massage places open yet. And some people would say that's not impor as important as some of these other things. But if your job, if that's your business, it, it is important. So I think we got to, you know, those places already focus tremendously on health, on sterilization. Getting the rest of business, I think, back open is the best thing we could do at, at a local level to let businesses thrive. Last year, I was coming back from Seattle and the TSA guy was like, you live in Boca? You're so lucky. Can you share why Boca is such an amazing place to visit and live in? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, I feel I'm super blessed to live here and super blessed to be part of the leadership of this city. Uh, when I first moved here, I was in Deerfield. I would be biking up to FAU and I was like, man, this is just beautiful. Imagine someday if I could live here and uh, luckily it's, it's worked out that way. Um, we've got so much going for us besides our enterprising youth who wake up nice and early on Saturday morning. I mean, look at it, you know, 
and are out there. And um, we've got several local, you know, local university, local private college, uh, another local, uh, you know, state college. We've got a hospital here, our beaches, private airport, uh, lots of business. Over 50% of the corporate headquarters for Palm Beach County are located right here in Boca Raton. A lot of people don't know that, but I think the best thing we have going for us gets back to the people of Boca. So not only do we have a lot of young uh, or you know, people who are still working, young professionals, executives here in Boca, but we have a lot of retirees who have done very well in the career, former you know, CEOs, CFOs, CIOs, who retire down here, and then they want to give back. And we have those people giving back on committees for our city, giving back through our nonprofits. So just between our young working professionals and our professionals, our, our young families and working professional families, and our retirees, our school system here. It's like we fire on all cylinders every day in Boca Raton. So I think that's part of what makes it a great place to live. What message do you have for kids like me? And how can we get involved in our communities? And do you have any career advice? So um, I think you personally, uh, you're doing everything you could possibly do. And I'm, you're a very impressive young man. Um, but for everyone as a whole, I'm a big fan of uh, everybody learning to code and you don't have to be like a top notch programmer but I think I'd like to see coding in the schools and we've done a good job in getting this into our schools our library system has some really good programs our makers lab where you can learn to program learn to make 3d printing and that you don't have to wait till you're in high school or college to learn to do that you could do that at elementary school you could do that middle school I'd say be engaged be uh, work to be really good at something and pretty good at a lot of other things so Find a focus, find something you love, be good at it, but don't don't forget the basics, you know, your maths, your sciences, your languages. Um, you know, STEAM continues to be the future of science, technology, engineering, arts, math. Uh, just focus on all of that. And if you want to get involved, we have programs with the city. We have a youth uh, a community uh, committee where a lot of people, young people are involved. You get involved in that. And you don't have to necessarily be on the committee to get involved in it. So you could start out by just going to the meetings. Our meetings here at city council, uh, where we meet the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, and they're open meetings, 6 p.m. You could come, in fact, you should come by sometime and uh, see what's going on. And if you can't make it, in, uh, well, right now we're meeting virtually, so don't come by this time yet, but once they're back in person, you can meet. For now, they're even easier to attend. You could go in, it's a go-to meeting, so you could attend remotely. But um, it's good to get involved. A lot of people, everyone pays attention to what's going on in Washington, and you know, you're either on the left or the right, or not happy with either the left or the right. It's not like that at the city level. You know, the city, it's about making sure the garbage is taken out, making sure your, your city is safe, making sure that fire and uh, emergency services show up and making sure you can find a job, put food on your plate, and that your kids are getting a good education. And that's what affects our lives far more than what, you know, any decree come out of Washington. So I'd say get involved, stay involved, and if you have any other questions, continue to reach out. I'll definitely check out those meetings. I think you'd like them. Yeah. What do you have to say to people in Boca and South Florida who are scared about their future due to COVID-19. Yeah, so I would say it's good to be cautious, but there's no need to be scared. Uh, you know, focus, focus on the future. And people are scared for kind of two reasons right now. Some people are scared from a health perspective. They don't want to go out. They uh, are locking themselves in. And if you're, again, in a more vulnerable state of health, if you have a lot of underlying factors, it, it's good to play it safe. But you could still, you know, if you're six feet away, outdoors is safe. You know, the beach is safe. We finally got our beaches back open. Uh, you know, should be in a very crowded area if you have those health conditions. Maybe give it a little bit more time, but I think we're seeing, if you look at the numbers, things are looking better every day. And then from an economic and a future, uh, I think things are coming back strong. You know, we're all in this together. We're all fighting for each other in this. And uh, if you need help, there's programs out there to help, whether it's uh, food help, between like uh, hospitality helping hands or Boca helping hands, no one should go hungry at, at all in Boca. Um, if you need career help, those same organizations, our city will help you out, our economic development standpoint. And then if you're a small business, I think those have been hurt, hurt the most. You know, we've seen large business, the, the Amazons, the Facebooks, uh, the Walmarts, they've done better in these times. But if you're a local mom and pop store, a local retailer, it's been a very hard time. So um, hang in there. We've we got to get back into our local shops and uh, I think we'll get through this together and hopefully get through it really soon. This is the rapid fire round. All I'm right. I will ask you quick questions and you have to give quick answers. Okay, I'm not good at quick answers sometimes, so I'll do my best. Okay. What is your favorite sport and why? Favorite sport? Probably volleyball. I just really enjoy playing it and I like the team aspect of it. Yeah, my favorite sport is tennis. 
I, I can tell you're pretty good at it. Why is yeah. tennis your favorite sport? Well, it's just fun. I love to run around the court and it's just, I can't explain it. It's just, I feel better and feel good when I'm playing tennis. That's awesome. What are your favorite activities to do in Boca Raton? My favorite activities, so, uh, as you mentioned, I've got quite a few uh, jobs and uh, side activities. I would say, to me, kind of being involved in the city, the city council is one of those big activities. And that isn't just sitting up on the dais and making laws and hearing people out, but it's doing things like this, meeting with your community, getting to meet with people, getting to meet with different resident groups, hearing them out. And a lot of people don't realize that there's at least two sides of almost every story. If we're up there discussing something, it's likely because there's two, very, at least two, very passionate sides, a lot of input. So that's a big part of it. But besides that, spending time with my family, checking out our beaches, going to our libraries, uh, just playing games with my family from time to time is about all I have time for. Yeah. Justin Bieber or Justin Timberlake? Oh man, <laughs> probably Justin Timberlake. Same. My dad would pick Justin Bieber. <laughs> Full talented. What is your second favorite city and why? My second favorite city. That's a good question. I'm from New York, so I'd probably go with that. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, South Florida is the sixth borough. Uh, Boca Raton is the sixth borough of New York. But I think you have such a mix of people there. Uh, there's just so much to do. It's the city that never sleeps. And just growing up there, grew up on a military base there. My dad was in the army. So we had a great experience where we were kind of in a spot where we weren't right in the middle of the city. We get to the city with just a train ride away. Um, so just the overall experience from an education, culture, food, um, probably couldn't beat it. Yeah. Guys, our mayor, deputy mayor, and all our local, state, and federal officials are working day and night on reopening our economy safely. We must listen to them and follow guidelines and local laws. All important links are down below. Mika out. In the sun. Hunter, you can take a shot if you want to, bud. Right, she's got good defense. Oh, nice shot. Good teamwork there. Good teamwork. Now, Devin. Deputy mayors, you know who can do that. <laughs> kind of step thirty dribbling. <laughs> Come on, Hunter. Hey. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, your guys. Both. Okay, you ready? Get open, Ainsley. Oh, good one. Excellent. Oh, oh, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I would pass it in. Oh, nice All shot. right, it's two for two. Two up. Next one wins. I know. My shoes. Oh, super try hard. I'm going super try. Oh, or oh, no. Nice. I need to go super try hard. Nice. Good game. Good game, guys. Good game. Good game. Good game. <laughs>